A few years back, the very first video I ever posted on YouTube was a very short clip of a turntable, motorized turntable that I had built for a local nonprofit uh, Christmas tree festival uh, where they uh, a lot of people decorate these tabletop Christmas trees, put them on display, and everybody bids on them, and it raises funds for the nonprofit. But that's all I did, uh, just a, a short little clip. You saw the turntable, it was all built. I stuck my drill on it just so you could see the thing turning around. And it was only a few seconds, didn't last very long. But that was it, that was my initiation to YouTube and making YouTube videos. Well, I've done it again. Um, this year, the Christmas tree festival has come up again, and uh, I was requested to make another one of these motorized turntables. So I made another video, only this time you're going to see how I built it. And I not only built it, but I've also drawn up a set of plans that you can easily follow and build one for yourself. These are cheap and easy to make. Uh, well, take a look. Here it is, and just like my original video, here's the turntable with a drill on it, just spinning around. Little tabletop Christmas tree is going to go on that. Of course, it's going to be covered. You're not going to you're not going to see the turntable like that. It'll have a covering on it. I just used a rotisserie motor and uh, a lazy Susan which I was able to buy, the mechanics for the Lazy Susan, I bought at Home Depot. Uh, relatively inexpensive, so this doesn't cost much to make. So let's get to it.
at this point I have the Lazy Susan installed. I have my box, I have my turntable. Now ordinarily I would make the turntable a little bit larger diameter to cover these corners but I just didn't have a piece of plywood large enough so that's why it's a little bit smaller. The Lazy Susan is attached and that's fine but we want this to be powered. So I have a rotisserie motor and this runs off 120 volts, 60 hertz, standard household current. And uh, I bought this off of Amazon, but you can get them in a number of places. The challenge is to get this centered now. This is where the shaft goes. And I have to get that centered on the underside here. I have to get it centered right there. And I know where that is. I've already got it marked. I did this ahead of time. Just measuring everything out. It's not very hard. It's, it's not difficult at all. Now for a drive shaft, uh, standard rotisseries use a 5 16th inch uh, square piece of metal. And this is key stock. It's zinc coated steel key stock. It's 5 16th so it fits perfectly. And now we have to drill a little hole, put in a little epoxy, put it in the, the, uh, the round top. And I have to find out the size and cut it down to size. And I have to find out where this is going to mount on the inside here. You can see. And I, I don't want it in the way of these holes where I can take the top off when I need to. I can put a larger top on later. So. What I have to do first, this uh, standard rotisserie mount that's on there comes off with three screws. This is also where I'm going to mount the motor onto the uh, turntable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this off, use it like a template to help uh, center where the drive shaft is going to go. And then what I'll do is when I go to put this back together I'll use longer screws because the screws are going to go through the uh, the box, the plywood box. Oops. Okay, these screws aren't very big. They look like they're number six. is I'm just going to take this here and I'm going to put it, find out where the, the center is and mark where the holes are going to go, the screws so I can figure out where to mount this. I mentioned this 5 16 inch key stock and I bought this through Home Depot. I bought it on their uh, website online and it was free shipping and it was less than three dollars. I only need a small piece so I'm going to use my handheld, my portable bandsaw, and as you can see, it's mounted on a table. This makes it easy for doing small jobs like this, so I just want to cut a little piece, so my hands are free to guide the piece. And the switch, I have a, uh, a separate foot switch that I can turn this on and off with, so I don't have to try to reach back and hold the trigger or anything like that. I designed this table for this particular uh, Haba Freight portable bandsaw and I did a video on it a couple of years back and there were free plans, uh, there's a link to the free plans in that video or at least in the video description that's below the video and if you're interested in building one of these I will include the link to that video in the video description below this particular video. And I'm just going to cut this little piece here. Okay. Cut. No problem. Just to show you what I'm doing. You can see the... I drilled a little hole in the center of that round uh, tabletop and I have the, the shaft right here and this measured to be about oh, one and seven eighths inches 
I'm trying to work one-handed here so I can I can do something with the camera. I just want to tap that in with the mallet. I can't. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. I was able to tap that into place. And I'm not going to put any epoxy in there to hold it right now. Because uh, I want to know where I'm going to mount this, uh, this rotisserie motor. And there's the, where the shaft goes. Right there. And I have to position it so I want to know where to screw it into place. Find out where that goes in. Here we go. Okay, so what I want to do now, I want this positioned, it's caddy cornered because I want to leave these uh, holes available so I can take the screws out when I want to remove the, the round table. I'm going to have to do that anyway in order to screw this rotisserie motor because the screws have to come from the underside going up. So now that I know where this rotisserie motor is going to go, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to run an outline around it. And I'll do that off camera. Okay, I've done that. You'll probably see the pencil outline. Now I can take that, that mounting plate, I can take that back off the motor and I can put the mounting plate on here and I'll know where the screw holes go and I can mark those and then drill pilot holes. Then I can take this apart and screw the motor on from the underside and put it back together again. Okay, I have the backing plate off. I've traced an outline of that backing plate so I can put it in position, line up the backing plate with the lines that I drew, the outline, And then I'll know where to put, I'll know where to take the pencil and mark where the screws go. So now that I've done that, I can take my, my awl and make a couple of marks here where that has to go. Now I can run a drill through as a pilot hole. And I'll use that as a guide. Now I can disassemble this. I'll take the box off and I can screw the motor on. you putting the screws in from underneath. So the screws I needed were indeed number six screws. And I do have some longer ones. I have one inch. And the ones that were in there are three quarters. I really need one and a quarter. But I don't have any and I don't want to run out and buy them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to countersink these holes. And I'll countersink them deep enough to compensate for the, uh, the screw not being long enough. All it has to do is hold that motor in place and that motor doesn't weigh very much and there's not going to be a lot of torque on this. So these screws will hold just fine. So I'll count a board. Okay, now that I have those holes drilled and counter board or countersunk, I can now take my motor and I don't have any need for this this plate. Put the motor directly on. And what I have to do now is just find where the screws go. Get those located and get them started anyway. Once I get these sticking out just a little bit. I can get the motor located on it. And I've got them all 
all started, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run them in with this power uh, screwdriver, and I'm just using this to speed up putting the screws in. And I'll finish it off with a hand screwdriver, manual screwdriver, so I can feel it. I, I don't want to over tighten them because they're going into plastic and I don't want to end up breaking the plastic lugs in the motor. All right, I got that firmly mounted. And I'll cut a little clearance notch for the cable. Do that later, I just want to make sure that all this works. I didn't use epoxy, I decided I was going to use a little carpenter's glue there. But I just want to, before I get it all screwed together, I want to test it out. And I'm just going to slide this into place for now. There we go. Okay. Okay, let's let it rip. I guess it helps if you turn the switch on on the motor. And, like my very first video that I ever did on YouTube, which was a turntable I built, although it was just a couple of snapshots, uh, it just showed this turning like it's doing now with the drill on it. Uh, I didn't do any video of the build itself. So, uh, it's high time I did that, I guess. Say the what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?